So last month, December 2021, there was an unfortunate severe weather event that had everybody talking, and that was the Kentucky tornado outbreak. Now, in December, you'd expect a big severe weather event to involve six feet of snow, two inch thick ice covering roadways, causing multi-car pileups, Arctic blasts in Wisconsin that keep kids home for an entire week. But historically, tornadoes in the winter months aren't actually anything new. In 2000, a violent tornado hit Tuscaloosa, Alabama, killing 11 people. In 2018, 29 tornadoes hit the state of Illinois, injuring 23 people. So what was significant about the December 11th tornado outbreak? Tornadoes have ingredients like cookies have ingredients. To make cookies, you need to cream butter and sugar, add an egg, vanilla, mix in your dry ingredient, shape into a ball, bake at 350 for 12 minutes until golden brown. I'm gonna be honest, I just really wanted to make cookies. The ingredients for a tornado are moisture, because you can't have clouds, let alone a storm without moisture, instability, which is the ability of the moisture at the surface to rapidly rise and condense into clouds, and wind shear, which is the changing of winds with height that causes a storm to rotate. These translate into 20 or so parameters shown here. Here's the thing though, not all of these parameters have to be met to make a tornado. If only, let's say, five of these parameters are met, you can still have a pretty destructive tornado develop. And oddly enough, the same thing applies to cookies. If you make a cookie just out of peanut butter, sugar, and egg, it comes out both looking and tasting like a cookie. I should be putting cookies in every single script. I don't know what I'm doing. In May, it just so happens that the Midwest gets the maximum moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, capped by maximum dry, cool air coming down from the Rockies, which gives the best chance for all of these tornadic parameters to be in the Goldilocks zone. But in December, it just so happens to occur in the deep south. Here in Cleveland, this December has been unseasonably warm, and I'm not personally complaining. The low pressure systems that swing through Ohio have been passing us a few hundred miles to the north, which means we're getting much more rain and much less snow. Typically with these winter lows, you have warm air to the south and cold air to the north, which is why areas around 100 miles to the northwest of the low center get the most amount of snow out of the entire system. These low pressure systems ride underneath the jet stream, which is why if we look at maps, we can see that, yeah, okay, the jet stream is also a few hundred miles further north when the lows swing through the Great Lakes. Now the jet stream typically separates cool dry air from warm moist air. If it's further north during the winter, that means that moisture from the Gulf is also penetrating further north. And suddenly you get all the right ingredients for tornadoes converging in the Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama corridor, also known as Dixie Alley. The prime time for Dixie Alley tornadoes starts in March, but if the winter is unseasonably warm, which it is, you can absolutely get severe weather in the winter months. On December 11th, there were temperatures in the 70s and dew points in the mid 60s in Western Kentucky, making it very muggy near the ground. Southerly winds at the surface brought up moisture from the Gulf. There were also breaks in cloud cover so the sun could heat the surface and the surface could heat the air above it, causing it to rise. This supplied the lift. There was ample dry air above the ground so the air could continue to rise into a thunderstorm. This supplied the instability. And on top of all that, the wind changed speed and direction with height, southerly and light at the surface, southwesterly and very strong a mile up, causing storms to rotate. So I'm in a very special position right now because it's currently January 1st and we have a nearly identical setup to December 11th, meaning that there might be a tornado outbreak today. So we're actually gonna transition into well, live coverage right now, but edited coverage when you see this of this tornado outbreak. And hopefully I can show you exactly all the ingredients combining together in real time. It's currently 12.48 p.m. Eastern time on New Year's Day, and we currently have a possible tornado outbreak in the making here. And I just kind of want to go over uh, some of the factors that we were talking about earlier in the video and how they play into a January tornado outbreak. This is the day one convective outlook for January 1st issued by the Storm Prediction Center. As you can see, there is an enhanced risk for severe weather that equates to a three out of five on the severe weather scale. And it is located mainly in uh, central Tennessee, northern Mississippi, and northern Alabama. If we take a look at the tornado probabilities, you can see this hatched area is a 10% risk 
of the probability of a EF2 to EF5 tornado within 25 miles of a point. Obviously, normally that probability is near zero. So 10% is a huge increase. And that's something we have to look out for. Now there's a lot of different parameters that we can look at in terms of determining whether or not a tornado is going to form. Uh, let's go over a couple of them on the model here now. First, we have the significant tornado parameter. As you can see, it's kind of picking up on the squall line that is uh, currently moving through central Arkansas and very far western Tennessee. But as we progress, Throughout the day, you can see that the potential really starts to exist in some rogue supercells that are going to form uh, in the more southern area in northern Alabama and northern Mississippi, which is kind of what we would expect for a day like this. We're now looking at a map of surface temperature and wind. So as you can see in, in northern Alabama, we're getting 73, 74 degrees. We have a southerly wind that is just streaming in moisture from the Gulf. So that's where we're getting the moisture part of this equation. In fact, if we look at dew point temperatures, they are in the mid and upper 60s, so it's very, very muggy and very humid in this environment. The other important factor that we talked about is wind shear, which is the changing of wind direction and speed with height. If we look at the surface, like we said earlier, we have southerly winds that are bringing in moisture. If we look at the 700 millibar map, which is, uh, I don't know, a few thousand feet above the, the surface here, and we click on wind speed at the same time, you see, oh, okay, these winds are coming out of the southwest at 51 knots. So 51 from the southwest at 700 millibars and 15 from the south. That is a pretty big difference and that is going to allow any storms that form somewhere along this boundary to rotate, which is how tornadoes form. Another parameter we can look at is something called CAPE. And basically when a thunderstorm is forming, you need air at the surface to rise. And uh, once it rises past a certain point, that's when it can explode up into a thunderstorm. Getting that parcel from the ground to rise up to a certain point is the equivalent of lighting the wick of a firework. And the amount of cape in the atmosphere is the equivalent to how much gunpowder is inside that firework, how large of an explosion is going to happen. So once the parcel is forced up to rise to a certain point, that's lighting the wick. So the firework is for sure going to go off. How big that firework is going to be equates to how much cape there is in the atmosphere. And we're getting, you know, decent for this time of year. 1250 is, is I'd say, more than enough to produce a, a couple supercells with tornadoes. So this is, once again, something we're going to have to look out for. So we got our first tornado watch of the day for storms forming east of this line here in central Tennessee. Another really important factor to help destabilize the atmosphere is going to be sunshine, because when the sun heats the ground, the ground heats up and then it heats the air above it. And when that layer of air becomes warm, it can then rise up to the point where it can explode into a thunderstorm. You can view cloud cover on satellite images, but something that we have nowadays in the age of the internet is live traffic cams, and that can give you an actual look at the sky in a certain place. Here's a live traffic cam from downtown Nashville, and as you can see, there's a stray shower moving through. But beyond that, we do have a lot of cloud cover, which is definitely going to help keep things, at least in this area, a little bit more stable. Here's a picture of the sky cam a little bit further south in, in Coleman, Alabama, from a few minutes ago. And as you can see, there's a lot of uh, low-level cumulus here that's blocking out a lot of the sunshine that could really help heat the surface and destabilize. So in terms of uh, severe weather happening, this is, uh, this is better news. Um, there's a lower chance that uh, we're going to see a really significant tornado outbreak today. Although none of the thunderstorms looked particularly impressive on radar, the National Weather Service did confirm a few small tornadoes dropped in Kentucky and Alabama. Although we are light years ahead of where we were 50 years ago in terms of weather prediction, it's still extremely difficult to determine exactly how strong a tornado is going to be at a given time. I hope you guys learned today that December tornadoes are not the end of the world. They actually occur um, somewhat frequently. Uh, could they be occurring more because uh, the climate could be warming for some reason? Yes, absolutely. That is something that could be happening. So we got to keep an eye out for that. If you want to help me out, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. Those are the three things you can do to help this channel out right now. See you guys in the next one. Stay safe.